started our journey in the year 1960 with about uh, 23 BTEC students and only three faculty members. And today we are uh, 42 faculty members, about 500 uh, BTEC students, uh, 250 MTEC students and uh, 200 PhD students. Now we are divided into four areas, that is uh, uh, thermal sciences, manufacturing, design, solid mechanics and robotics. And uh, the department consists of the uh, or has the latest state of the art equipment in most of these uh, uh, areas. For example, in engines uh, research, we are rated in the first five in the world in terms of uh, facilities, for example, single cylinder engine, uh, uh, which is the only one in India. And uh, in terms of robotics, we have robotics facilities uh, which are consisting of UG experiments as well as the PG uh, experiments, including industrial robots. Then in terms of uh, simulation hardware, simulation software, which have been developed in the industry for uh, use on HPC systems. Then we have very, very strong fluid mechanics and thermal screen, probably the strongest in the country. And in the area of solid mechanics and design, we do computational mechanics for looking at material behavior and uh, design of systems. In the area of manufacturing, we have uh, we are also looking at newer concepts of manufacturing, for example, additive manufacturing of metal composites. In the future, we are looking at uh, three or four verticals. Uh, for example, we are looking at the vertical of uh, uh, extreme mechanics and computational mechanics. The second is uh, AI and robotics. Uh, third is the area of uh, thermal management of uh, batteries, sustainability, green energy, then we are also looking at uh, advanced manufacturing technologies. Development of uh, gas turbine combustor, which can operate on hydrogen and uh, other renewable fuel is the need of the hour and uh, critical uh, standard of emission from these gas turbines are the driving force towards the development of the modern gas turbine combustors. So here we have developed lean premixed gas turbine combustor which can operate on compressed natural gas and the hydrogen. Even we have tested with 100% hydrogen fuel in premixed mode. So these combustors are, uh, we found the operating limit of these combustors and now they can be scaled for a bigger combustor. Also, apart from the gaseous fuel, we tested liquid fuel, for example, diesel, and we used an innovative strategy to atomize the fuel and mix it before it reaches the combustion chamber. And that resulted in a bluish color of flame. And these uh, flames are basically, doesn't produce soot. We have tested that the NOx emission from these flames are also uh, very low. This uh, effort will be uh, utilized in the gas turbines, for example, the power generation, as well as in the aviation industries. The SFSS lab is a unique laboratory in the country which has developed a whole gamut of different types of sensors, actuators, and intelligent robots for varied applications in national and international scenario. Later on, we have expanded our skills in terms of developing different types of systems like metastructures and metamaterials, which has wide applications in sound and vibration control, inspection robots, which has applications not only for pipe health monitoring robots, but also for substation inspection inspection in the uh, terrains which are very difficult to be accessed by any conventional transportation systems and also we have worked extensively in the area of medical technology in bionic arm development in the support for the elderly people by the development of smart stick and also for child-robot interactions, which is important in terms of the quality training for the children of our country. The most common packaging materials that you see around are styrofoam, thermocone, and some of these petroleum-based uh, polystyrene foams. These are also used as sound absorbing materials. The problem with this is that they are not biodegradable and they are mostly not recyclable. In our lab, we developed various kinds of uh, 
biodegradable materials which will double up as packaging materials as well as one can use them for sound absorption so we have succeeded in making various kinds of foams starting with uh, various kinds of agricultural residue rice banana stem bagasse and also water hyacinth further we have also made aerogel like uh, materials this is made from bacterial cellulose we also have foams of phytosan so we have succeeded in uh, various kinds of foams now once we make these foams we do two kinds of characterizations first is we measure the elastic properties so these can be anisotropic so we measure uh, using this instrument called resonant ultrasound spectrometer wherein we identify all the possible 21 elastic constants so when once we do that we measure the sound absorption as well as transmission loss in this acoustic impedance tube that we have put together so this will tell us how much a material allows the sound to pass through as well as how much sound it can absorb This is the specially designed room for the an echoic chamber. So this is a, a very special room and uh, it's lined with wedges all across. This is the bell mouth collector. So what it does is job is to collect the flow as it goes and smoothly the flow is exited. This is a test section and uh, here you see an airfoil precisely Naka 001 to air for a standard model that is used uh, in all aeroacoustic uh, testing to test out new algorithms and so on. So um, this is mounted here. What you're seeing essentially is an open jet test section and there's a turntable, round turntable which has capability of rotating at high angles and is controlled by a, a stepper motor control and the control is outside. Here you're seeing the DAC system, uh, an NI DAC system and an acoustic camera essentially beam forming array designed uh, here at locally at IITK. This is the 32 channel array uh, right now and is able to simultaneously record noise from this test section. And once we go outside, we are able to see the nozzle, which is uh, which follows a third order spline profile, uh, designed based on some Bo Pope and Mehta curve. So here, now we have an extensive set of turbulence reduction screens, which go from coarser to finer. Perhaps the most unique selling part of this facility is that when the flow is, uh, when the tunnel is operated, the flow noise is very less. It's at least, this SNR is at least 15 dB or more. Because it's open, it's an open section nature, so it allows you to do area acoustic measurements, which is very unique to this facility. And of course, this has turbulence intensity of less than 0 0.3, 0 0.2 or something like that. So um, with this, it is ideally suited to carry out air acoustic uh, test. We have designed and developed a turbine blade with novel conformal cooling channels that shows improve thermal performance of the turbine blade. The turbine technology has evolved to operate at higher temperatures to maximize efficiency, which in turn places significant mechanical and thermal stresses on turbine blades. Improved cooling is needed to mitigate these stresses. Conformal cooling channel in the blade can significantly improve the cooling effectiveness. However, manufacturing such blade is challenging by conventional manufacturing and here 3D printing technology is an answer. Heat transfer analysis has been carried out for cooling efficiency for a NASA C3X turbine blade with different types of internal cooling channels namely circular, fin and helical designs. The results indicated that the helical design exhibited the best cooling. For manufacturing this complex design, we have successfully 3D printed a turbine blade having novel conformal cooling channels that showed improved blade thermal performance. For this, the metal 3D printing process based on laser powder bed fusion has been developed. Optimized printing parameters have been suggested in order to manufacture blade with minimum defects of porosity, surface roughness, residual stress and distortion. In my lab, the effort has been to utilize methanol, which is produced from waste. Waste materials such as parali, waste materials such as municipal solid waste, and high ash coal, which we have plenty in this country. So by liquefying that via gasification route, we convert it to methanol. And methanol is uh, a fuel which can potentially be used in the vehicles. And it has potential to sustain the entire transportation uh, sector of the country 
with indigenous resources in a cost effective manner we are relying on indigenous fuels and we are developing technology solutions for accepting indigenous fuels the entire work of development of this methanol fuel two wheeler is being done in the indian research lab of iit kanpur which is one of the state of the art facilities for indian related uh, research in india here basically we have done this development in three stages one is that we did the detailed engine test for combustion and performance and we did the rough calibration of the ecu on the engine dynamometer and then the second stage was the installing the vehicle and the ecu and the harness on the vehicle and after that the vehicle is tested on the chassis dynamometer so our test indicate that right now with m85 our vehicle's performance is superior to gasoline so its acceleration is more the highest speed can attain is more uh, the emissions are lower any assembly that is nano photonics enabled solar membrane distillation is the tactic that desalinates sea water we have designed the first large prototype of any assembly system in india that has a dimension of 20 cm by 60 cm this prototype can produce distilled water up to 440 ml in a day while working for a 8 hour in this manner it can produce 3.7 liter for a 1 meter square setup in a day so this is the way we can produce the drinkable water using the solar energy this system is meant for neuro rehabilitation of stroke patients specifically for the patients who have some kind of finger impairments resulting from stroke so this system makes an attempt to make the user mentally engaged in the process of therapy so this system has two parts one is the physical robot which plays the part of a physiotherapist and there is a bci system which makes a user mentally involved in the process of therapy it records brain and muscle signals from the user and calculates whether the user is mentally engaged in the process or not we have systems to record the brain and muscle signals from the user we can determine whether the person is mentally thinking about the process of therapy or not and then the system can provide effective assistance in order to achieve better neuro rehabilitation outcomes this machine is works on a basically on the melting of a powder at a point and we will get 3d printed structures this is the iit kanpur product so here we have different components in this machine which is our first laser head which is used for directing the powder and the laser at a single point and we have uh, a laser of ipg then we have cnc wet plus we have powder feeder we are using two or more powders together to print a multi material object basic principle is that when the powder comes from the powder feeder it concentrated at a single point and along with that we have a laser which is at a similar point when these two things meet together there is a fusion took place between the powder between the powders so thus that it melt remelt and just stick together to form a one point then layer by layer and this will get the whole 3d products our product is swan m2 a four legged quadruped robot this robot we have designed from scratch both the hardware and the software in the mobile robotics laboratory and right now it's being developed as a product with extra robotics which is uh, incubated at siic iit kanpur Uh, this robot has the ability to move in different types of environments where generally wheeled robots cannot go such environments are uneven unstructured terrains it can move on stairs and uh, basically helps us to reach areas which are difficult for other robots to go into we are developing this robot for applications in industries this robot can be mounted with different types of sensors and can do autonomous inspection and monitoring this is also suitable for defense applications in which this robot can be used for autonomous surveillance and intelligence operations we are working towards developing these robots uh, to assist humans in different domains and applications the equipment we have built is for gas hydrate formation and dissociation at high pressures and uh, here what we have done is that we have gone to large scale model of the 25 liter reactor so that we can actually simulate the conditions to a more general level so there in in our lab we also add lot of additives that can be used at a large scale to enhance the hydrate formation rate we have also mounted chain and pulley arrangement so that you can lift the uh, reactor head and you can place your water and whatever additives you want to add and along with that there is also arrangement to visualize the hydrate formation there are four optical 
uh, sapphire windows which are mounted at the periphery of the reactor along with that there is also interest uh, a growing interest in the community to uh, desalinate the water using uh, hydrates so here we have also have the arrangement so that we can form hydrate and we can also enhance the hydroformation rate for desalination purpose